Hi there. Welcome to my Exam AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 65 entitled GitHub and GitHub Actions. My name is Tim Warner. In the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 objective domain, today we're starting with the functional group, describe core solutions and management tools on Azure, passing through the objective, describe core solutions available in Azure, and the granular skill is called describe the benefits and usage of GitHub and GitHub Actions. TimW.info slash AZ900SG is a great base of operations to look at this entire study guide with links to the videos. Let's get started. What is GitHub and GitHub.com? Stated succinctly, it's a cloud-based platform that uses Git as its core technology. What is Git? Git is a source code management or SCM toolset. The idea is that one or more application developers want to keep a full change history of their source code. And in particular, when you have multiple application developers working on the same code base, we want to ensure to preserve all changes and prevent unintentional overwrites and conflicts and this sort of thing. Git is a distributed source code version control platform. We can have a team, for example, using a GitHub-based repository, as you see in the screenshot at right, just as an example, you can see what the web UI looks like. And those developers can each clone or copy the repository down to their local system. You have to have the Git toolset installed. It's available for free on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Make changes, commit changes from time to time. That's creating a version of those files at a point in time. Then you can push those changes up to the shared repository, and those who maintain the repository can put down gates to ensure that any changes submitted to the cloud-based or GitHub-based master repo have to go through an approval process or automated testing, this kind of thing. GitHub Flow is what GitHub calls it, this concept of having a cloud-based repository that can be passed around. GitHub is used, I don't want to say predominantly for open source public projects, because there is a whole private side of GitHub called GitHub Enterprise, where businesses can keep their code bases private. But GitHub flourishes in the open source community, where you're publishing your project for anybody potentially to contribute to. GitHub also integrates with many other clouds and platforms. Now, this got a little bit controversial a year or so ago when Microsoft purchased GitHub. Microsoft is internally standardized on Git as their source code management platform, and more and more they started porting their projects into open source into GitHub, so it seemed inevitable. But GitHub is a Microsoft property, but I want you to understand that Microsoft keeps GitHub separate from Microsoft.com and the Microsoft Azure your cloud. There's lots and lots of integration points for sure, but you do not have to be a Microsoft Azure subscriber to work in GitHub. Microsoft does have a cloud-based tool set called Azure DevOps that not only integrates with GitHub, but Azure DevOps has its own source code management system called Azure Repos. Yes, it can be a little bit confusing. It's still kind of early days in terms of the integration now that Microsoft owns GitHub and they've made Azure DevOps. Some customers are wondering, should our software development teams begin to migrate from Azure DevOps to GitHub? or from GitHub to Azure DevOps. For the foreseeable future, both of them are going to be fully supported. However, Microsoft did tell me a few months ago that any new innovation is going to happen first at GitHub. GitHub Actions is a subset of the GitHub tools. I mean, GitHub is a whole library of functionality. Their centerpiece, of course, is cloud-based source code management, but they now have a package manager where software developers can keep their software packages in the cloud. And this GitHub Actions ties in with task automation and workflows. So you've got your repository in GitHub, you can switch over to the Actions tab and you can build a continuous integration CI build chain or build pipeline. So you might have, say, an open source Node.js application, and instead of having to build the application, install dependencies, build the app, and run and test all on your local system, you can do it now all in GitHub using GitHub Actions. For example, when you do a code commit into the GitHub-based repo, that could be used as a continuous integration trigger that would not only build your software, but depending upon what else you've done in your workflow, you can put automated testing, security vulnerability scanning, and so on to layer in there. Continuous deployment is the other side of CI. Once you've built and tested your application and the code changes have not broken anything, <laughs> that's a good thing. 
you want to think about releasing the application, not necessarily directly to a production stage, but at least to a staging area where your QA testers and security engineers can kick the tires to further validate that the most recent code changes that have been integrated are not breaking anything but enhancing functionality. So like I said, GitHub Actions is a pretty big deal because historically, development teams working in GitHub would have to use an external CI CD platform like Jenkins CI or Azure DevOps actually in order to do build and release processes, but now we can do that all within GitHub, which is pretty cool. In this brief demo, we'll do a very lightning round, high-level tour of GitHub. And understand that I'm scoping this demo very granularly. We could do a whole study guide just on working in GitHub.com. I would suggest that you go to GitHub.com and create a free account. As long as your repos are public, you can do a lot of GitHub stuff, including GitHub Actions for free. Then there are a number of pricing tiers in terms of for individuals or teams. We don't need to worry about any of that for our AZ900 success, though. As you can see, I'm at GitHub.com on my profile page I've signed in. I'm going to go directly to one of the GitHub Action demo repositories. This is a simple Node.js JavaScript application that is a calculator app. And what I'm going to do first is make a copy of this repo. I don't have any write capability on this particular project. As you can see, it's Action Demos is the account, and then Calculator is the name of this repository. Now, I could apply to be a contributor, in which case I could push changes and make what are called pull requests, where I ask the maintainers who have the ability to merge changes to merge my changes. This is one of the core principles of open source development. But because this is an open source project, I can fork, as you see over here, or make a clone of this project under my account, Timothy Warner. And this way, I will be the repository owner of my copy of my fork. You see what I mean? So now at this point, I can open the code menu and copy this clone URL. And then on my system using Git tools, I have Visual Studio Code and the Git tools installed on this machine. So I can bring up a terminal session on my system and type git clone, paste in that clone URL. I'll need to put a space in between the clone word and the project's URL. And now I'm copying those files down to my local system. I can then CD into that directory and do a directory listing. And now I have all those source files. So I can work and make edits and extensions to this application, keeping in mind the license terms. There are several open source licenses and you want to definitely not ignore those. Okay, we don't need to worry anymore about Git. I want to spend the rest of my time going over to Action. So assuming that this is, as I said, a simple Node.js JavaScript application, how can we build and test the application? Well, you have to have your manifest fest files in the project. In other words, I've got my package.json that's going to list all of my node dependencies that we need. And there's a test subfolder that has unit tests. All that's good and fine. And now we can switch on over to actions and we can create a CI, continuous integration build process for this application. So here it's just saying, okay, get started with GitHub Actions. And they ask if we want to use one of these samples. I'm going to set up the Node.js workflow created by the GitHub Actions team directly. Let's set up this workflow. And here we can see the source code of the workflow. Now in Azure DevOps, this is called a YAML build pipeline. YAML is simply a data representation format that is an alternative to JavaScript object notation or JSON, which we'll look at in the next lesson, as a matter of fact. So you'd want to study the docs and go through the tutorials. But long story short, what this is saying is when we push code to the master or main branch of this project, kick off a build process automatically. And then the steps here are running various NPM commands to run a build and to run the test suite automatically. The actual file, the pipeline file, will be in my repository in a hidden folder called .github and a subfolder called workflows, and I'll call it nodejs.yaml. And I'll want to commit this file to the repository, which will actually trip off the build process, like I said, because that's the whole purpose of this GitHub action stuff. So let's finish up by going over to actions. And we can see now that my build process is queued and we can click into it to take a closer look. 
Let me zoom out so we can see more on the screen. And if we go over to jobs, we can take a look at each step in this terminal view. And the idea with DevOps is as you're doing your pipeline, if there's a failure that should break the pipeline immediately and you as a developer in the name of having a short feedback loop, we'll know what the problem is. There'll be no, you'll be notified what the problem is. You fix it and then rerun the pipeline, you see? Looks like this completed successfully. Good job. And understand that you can use these actions not only for a build process, but we could also use that YAML syntax in conjunction with, say, Microsoft Azure to publish this application, say, to Azure App Services. I'll give you that as a homework assignment to do. Learning resources for further learning. Microsoft Learn has a free module called Introduction to GitHub. I strongly suggest you take a look at this because if you plan to do anything technical in Azure, you're going to wind up hitting development and Git repositories no matter where they are. So it's a good idea for you to get up to speed with Git tools in general and GitHub in particular. To learn more about GitHub Flow, there's timw.info slash gha2. I guess I didn't give you the link for the introduction to GitHub. The short link there is timw w.info slash gha1. Third and lastly, a hello world simple example to allow you to test GitHub Actions, which you can do for free, by the way. Should have mentioned that. You can go to timw.info slash gha3. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot for your participation and attention. In the next episode, we'll consider Azure Resource Manager or ARM templates. My Twitter is Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site courses are at timw.info/ps, and my personal website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Happy studying.